Hello, in this video, we're going to introduce how to perform Gibson assembly and uh, ligation. So we back to, let's get back to the experiment cloning RFP into pack 18. So we find we can use equal R1 and the second one uh, with restriction analysis here. So we digest the pack 18 with equal R1 and second one and uh, generate this plasmid backbone and purify it with uh, gel separation. On the other hand, we digest the plasmid and clone the RFP with the PCR. To perform Gibson assembly design, we need at least one PCR node. And uh, the other fragment can be gel purification or whatever as long as the Gibson assembly design can modify the PCR, it would work. So simply we just select uh, both two fragments and the click Gibson design and then just one simple click apply. The Gibson design will attach the annealing sequence to, the, to both primers. So Gibson assembly is actually identical to recombination. Uh, the recombination option in vivo annealing, if you click the exhaustive assembly mode, it's identical to Gibson assembly. If you want to control the Gibson assembly direction, uh, we first remove the annealing sequence from the primer and the back to the Gibson assembly designing design no uh, node. Here we can take reverse either the fragment, the plasmid backbone or the fragment. If we tick here, uh, be careful. Now the RP and the pack, a, uh, pack replication arranging are in the same direction. If we click this one and uh, click apply, there will be different. Uh, they will be in different direction because this one, the PCR fragment, was uh, set as reverse direction, and uh, also we can attach some additional sequence in the PCR node. For example, if we want insert a SAC1 site uh, for later use, so we can do it again, just clone in the same direction. Uh, you can do any direction actually. So we just do the same direction and uh, apply. And you can see the SAC1 site here, just right after the RFP. So that's how you can use Gibson design to design the primers and the Gibson assembly. To perform ligation, we usually add restriction size at the end of the PCR primers. So for example, this one, we add equal R1 and cell one here. So we apply and uh, digest cell one equal R1 and uh, do the gel purification. We get this fragment and uh, with the proximity backbone we can perform ligation. We select both two nodes and uh, click ligation here so ligation, you can also find the ligation in the buttons. Uh, and there's a short key for ligation, which is control W. So whatever it is, we just perform the ligation, do normal two fragment, fragment ligation. So we click apply. Uh, but you can see we got a range of different products because MCDC, uh, MC DS actually simulated the real ligation 
process. So you actually got all the intermediates in the ligation products and also the byproducts. To screen the plasmid from the intermediates and the byproducts, which is similar as what you do with a, a plate or calling the PCR, so we can do a screening. From the menu, you can find the screen here. The shortcut is Control T, and there's also a button here. Click Screen, and we want only circular one, so we tick this, and uh, we want the plasmid have has amicillin resistance, so we click this. Uh, you see, it's already working. We got only one plasmid here. Uh, which is circular and uh, contains ampicillin only once. All right, so that's basic uh, Gibson assembly and uh, ligation. Uh, normally, uh, when you do Gibson assembly, you can also do multi multiple fragments. For example, uh, this is a simulation of six fragments. Uh, we got six different fragments from E. coli genome and uh, to save the time, I, I already designed the primer. So here is the Gibson design. By just click the Gibson design, we can assemble six fragments together. So we can simulate this again with the recombination. Uh, here, exhaustive and uh, in vivo annealing mode, apply. So it's actually the same thing. However, if we add another fragment, so this fragment has the same annealing ends of this one. S so if we add this fragment into the system, uh, we can show that the Gibson assembly simulation uh, will tell you your design won't work properly. So for example, we perform the recombination with the in vivo annealing mode and the exhaustive. So we click apply. And then here, you won't get one single product, you actually got a byproduct. Uh, the reason why, uh, that is because you have one fragment that doesn't match, can't perfectly join into the rest six. So that means there's some r something wrong in the design. So this is showing how recombination and the Gibson design can do the proof uh, of your design, can simulate your design. So now we look at the golden gate assembly. In golden gate assembly, uh, it's a multiple fragment ligation. So we also have one, two, three, four, five, six, six fragments. They are all digested and uh, they are designed with the proper ends. So we just select all six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and do the ligation. But here, be careful. If you want to perform multiple fragment ligation, especially the golden gate, you need the multiple fragment ligation mode. And then click apply. You will get six fragment ligate into the plasmid. However, if we wa add one extra fragment that doesn't match or work in the system, so this is, is uh, one error we intend to add. So we label it is with red. So we do the ligation. Again, we select multiple fragment ligation mode and apply. And here you can see 
you won't get the circular form because there's some error in your design. Instead of Gibson assembly, multi-fragment Gibson assembly and the Golden Gate assembly, uh, there's also 5C31 assembly, which has been published by a few groups. So with 5C31, which actually set specific recombination. So we can see here, we have 5C31, ACT, PCC, C, BCT, PCT, uh, BGT, PGT, BCA, PCA, BAA, PAA, and uh, BGA, PGA, and uh, BCC, PCC at the end of each. So we select all of them and uh, do the recombination. The here, we select the 5C31BP recombination and also we need the exhaustive mode to uh, assemble multiple fragments. Then we click apply. But you can see that there's the assemble the 6.85k circular fragment uh, circular plasmid which is the one we want and there are also the 64 linear fragments which are the residue recombination sites you know because after recombination the bp will become l and r so those ones are either the l or the r uh, which are the byproduct, but that doesn't matter. We just uh, use a screen, and we want the circular one with the ampicillin, and we got the plasmid that has all five fragments assembled into the plasmid. So, okay, that's how you can use Gibson assembly, ligation, and the recombination to perform ligation Gibson assembly and uh, even multiple fragment Gibson Golden Gate or 5C31 site specific recombination assembly. Thank you.